What's going on guys, Jumbo Jobble here, and yesterday the Revelations trailer came out, so what I've done is I've gone through it really slowly, kind of frame by frame, made a note of everything that feels important, and I'm going to break it all down for you in this video today. It might be a bit of a long one, so if you do watch all the way through it, thank you very much, and let's just really, let's just jump right into this. So most of the opening is the words, the day of reckoning is here, but then we get this shot of the sun summoning key that comes close to the screen. We're not quite sure what it says on it yet, but then we get this other shot of what we assume to be the start room, because if you look in the bottom of the screen, you can see the quick revive machine. So so what I'm thinking here is will the house in the background actually be accessible because we can't see any wall bars or anything up there so we're not sure if it's just this little area down here is if that could arrive up against like a back wall or something or whether we can run up to the house and go in there and also just for something funny that I saw on Reddit was someone actually fixed the fence that the shadow man destroyed in the intro cutscene so this could potentially be our start room we actually get a, sh a shot of it from a different angle later in the trailer but for now this is what we assume is the start room because of the quick revive perk machine now this is the next important shot this is the primus statues and the last time we saw these were actually in origins now they were in the multiplayer map and they have been on pictures throughout black ops 3 but for the statues themselves this is the first time they've been in black ops 3 and this is where i think the staffs will be because if they're going to have the staffs return in this map they're not going to show them in the trailer because Treyarch want you to be surprised by this map they want because this is the penultimate thing this is the build-up of eight years so they still want some things to be kept as a little secret something that you can play the map find them and be like oh my god they actually added them in so i feel if the staffs are going to be in this map they're going to be here and what i mean by that is on Origins, each staff was positioned by one of the statues so like i think it was like richtofen had wind takio had the lightning one they were like holding them if the staffs are in this map, they're going to be placed at the feet of these statues, and that's what I seriously believe. And then we get this shot, which is actually the top of the staircase from Natch Dun Toten. And something that I find really funny is they've changed what the writing says. In this one, it says knowledge, knowledge itself is for the taking, whereas in the original one, it says salvation lies above, and salvation is the DLC map pack name, which I think is really quite funny. I don't know if they changed that on purpose or whether they have a reason for it. Obviously, the knowledge itself is for the taking is because this is the big battle between the, the Apothecans and the Keepers, but still, if you look in the background, you can also see Juggernaut. So, this is Natched, and the way that you see uh, maps, like different maps they're bringing back throughout this trailer leads me to a big question that I'm going to ask when we see a few more of the maps, particularly Mob of the Dead through this trailer. But still, that's shown to we know our jug location, and there's just that little funny thing with the right in there. Now, these next couple shots are actually situated in Der Reisendrach, and as you can see, this is around the MPD. We've got the keepers there, but when we look at it later in the trailer, it's actually completely broken and busted. And when you look at the maps that are actually uh, situated inside this map, if that makes any sense, all of them are really broken, they're really twisted, and they don't look anything like their original. So this is the room underneath, the antigrav room, where the big triangle is. And I'm not sure how much we can go, like how far we can go down. So obviously we have the teleporter room, we have the way back into the spawn room from this room. But all we see in this trailer is this middle section here with the MPD and the uh, gates around it that you can wall run on once you've turned on the antigrav. Now this shot here is really cool because this huge artifact is actually the prestige master symbol. Once you reach prestige master on zombies, you actually get this, this uh, like pylon thing, but it's blue. So what I'm thinking is maybe in the Easter egg, like you did on Black Ops 2 where you had to choose between Maxis and Richtofen, and one of them could go orange, one of them could go blue. Maybe this changes colour and maybe this has something to do with the Easter egg. Obviously it does because it's such a huge monument in the map, but still, maybe the colour change has something to do with it because they wouldn't put a blue Prestige Master one if it's going to be red in the map. And also we have this pad on the right and what I'm thinking in this is, is this is like a dial where you can change what map you teleport to. Because in the next shot you'll see in a second they walk actually through a portal. And I think you walk through this portal and it teleports you to a map and I think this pad on the right here is how you choose what map you're going to choose, uh, go to. Sorry. We also have this little table on the left which is a bit reminiscent of Mob of the Dead, you know, we've got skulls and we've got candles, but it could also be something like a sacrifice table or something um, where you can put a weapon down or put th throw grenades onto and it'll give you something back in return. So here's that shot of our characters going through the portal and that's the portal I think which will teleport you to all the different maps and on the right here in the centre we have this Cthulhu looking sacrifice table which is kind of reminiscent of Shadows of Evil so maybe this is something to do with uh, the progress tracking on the easter egg or whether it's something where you have to sacrifice someone or drag a crawler to or something but still this looks really cool you know you've got your swirling blue in the background but still I think that teleporter that portal sorry is the way you get onto all the different maps. Then there's this nice sweeping shot of the origins trenches and time's actually frozen you can actually see this fog on the floor by the uh, part where the characters are running and the fog's not moving time is frozen still and they're running through the origins trenches which i think is where we got the coding that i covered on my channel where we got the origins coding the ascensions coding and the keynote coding 
I think that is actually where this map comes into play. I don't think we're getting remastered maps, obviously, now. Uh, this is where I think this is coming into play. They've got the assets from the older games and put them into this map here. Just a quick shot here to uh, explain that we've got Shadows of Evil Zombies with what looks like a mix of other zombies because we've got these skeleton looking ones that look like they could be straight out of Shangri-La or something. Also on the very right of the screen you can see a gobble gun machine or like the left part of it, like the little wing bit. But still, Shadows of Evil Zombies and that guy's got a German hat on so I think that could be kind of reminiscent of the original maps, the World at War maps. So I think we've got a mix of Black Ops 1 Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 zombies here and obviously the gobble gun machine and now what we get are these actual few shots of Mob of the Dead there's quite a few that are clumped together and this is what I was talking about with the maps because these areas that we see from Mob of the Dead we can obviously tell that it's Alcatraz because of the gates the hanging bodies the chains just the colors and everything like that and obviously we've played the map but this area doesn't actually look familiar this isn't a part where I could say I've ran through there and I've done this or like I could be put on that part of the map and find my way to like the gondola or something so what I'm thinking is, have they expanded some of the maps? Have they taken the theme of like Mob of the Dead, but made a new area in Alcatraz that we can play? Because this, like I said, I, I don't know where any of these parts are. So have they changed how, like where you're situated in the maps? Obviously Alcatraz is a prison and we were put in cell blocks, but have they changed what cell blocks are in or something? But still, Mob of the Dead, I'm really happy this comes back. So I love Mob of the Dead, it's my absolute favorite map of all time. Then we get this epic shot of the Revelations logo. And if you can look, down underneath the T in the eye, there's actually a bench with three plants on them. But in the middle of those, there's a gap. This is where I think you put the Grod Crovey plant. Now hear me out. I made a video, if you haven't seen it on my channel, discussing uh, the like MacGuffins in Mob of the Dead and how I think that relates to the flask, the plants, and whatever else we couldn't figure out, the Easter eggs to on Grod Crovey. Those plants, they look a lot like the plants that were in the plant pot in Grod Crovey and that gap looks just big enough to fit that vase. I think that's where we put one of the MacGuffins and there's another part in the trailer where I'm going to discuss the candle where I think you put that. But I think this just further backs up my idea that those plants and the candles and that weren't actually for use in Grod Crovey and that you actually used them in Revelations. People were also saying there's a new perk somewhere on the screen near the, near the Revelations bit, near the R, but if they're talking about that little thing underneath the V, I think that's just another map selection dial, or what I think is a map selection dial. And just as a bit of trivia, there's a little uh, Element 115 rock up at the top left that looks like the Pack-a-Punch camo from Origins, which I thought was quite cool. Now this is extremely hard to see because this is just one frame, similar to how the Av Avogadro was teased in the the transit trailer for one single frame we get a sneak peek of the, the monster that I think we see further in the trailer and it's actually like this weird gooey black ink monster but still get a sneak peek of that after that we get this which is actually someone fighting down the Shangri-La staircase with a Vespa kind of happy to see Shangri-La coming back because a lot of people didn't like Shangri-La like I like me I only played it to the Easter egg and then I never really went on it again but still kind of happy to see Black Ops 1 maps coming back alongside Black Ops 2 maps now a lot of people are getting really confused with this section of the map here and I don't really see why because we have our three characters that are fighting through it, obviously, but on the right, near the doorway, you can see like a kind of gas vial thing. This is Zetsubo no Shima. A lot of people are saying this is Verukt, but if you look, those are the things that the, there's the clones in them the, for the jump scare. That's what that is. I believe this is Zetsubo no Shima because we have the K and wall bite on the wall again and the K and sighting similar to Dr. Monty and all his teasers, but still, I do believe this is actually Zetsubo no Shima and not Verukt. We then get kind of a sweeping shot of the Shangri-La spawn room again with the full mix of zombies that we can see and to be fair, I think if Shangri-La was brought out on next gen, it would look really pretty because obviously previous gen you could only do so much with graphics, but if this is what it looks like when it's been updated and thrown into the new engine, this looks really nice. Obviously, we can tell it's Shangri-La because we've got the dragon on the side. We have the little um, pillars that the dragon pours water into once uh, the pack a punch room is done. We have a window that didn't actually exist in Shangri-La. Uh, quick five would be to the right, by the way, if anyone was really confused as to where we're standing. That would be the little eclipse button area. And to the left, we'd have a window. But there's actually this red, like, kind of blocky... I don't know if it's a doorway or a perk machine or something, but this red rectangle on the left is really confusing me. But still, like I said, Shangri-La would look absolutely amazing in next gen. Now, I believe this area is actually Verukt near Speed Cola. So if you started on the right side of the map and you'd open up past the trench gun or the double barrel shotgun, I believe it was, uh, this is actually, I think, upstairs where you'd find the speed color machine where everybody would normally camp because they only came in through the back window behind you and the door that was kind of by power. I think that's where that is, but I'm not sure because the scenery also looks a bit mob of the deady. So we're going to have to actually play the map to decipher what map 
this part of the map's in, if that makes any sense. Here's our next perk that we've got confirmed, this is Speed Cola, and I'm not sure if we're running through Zetsubo no Shima here, or a destroyed version of Verruckt, or even Mob of the Dead, because Mr. LJD pointed out that that door behind Nikolai right now could actually be the one where you could go upstairs to the roof, uh, to the infirmary part of it. And that's the window where below that would be a box location. I think you actually see it if you play it through in slow motion, like the, the little box location thing. So it could be Zetsubo no Shima because of the vines, it could be Vrook because of the just atmosphere, but because of the map layout, it could be Mob of the Dead. So it's going to be really interesting to run through all of these different maps that we've played over these eight years and try and decipher which part of which map is where. We then have the infamous Vrook wall writing, which everyone uh, tried to decipher back in the day, but obviously we only had this map to talk upon once it came out we didn't have Shinonuma where the story really started but still we have the famous Verrucked wall writing which I'm happy to see return because that was like like the OG easter egg like nobody knew what that means we spent ages trying to decipher it and I believe this is in the room where speed color is in the original Verrucked so I'm gonna be f it's gonna be fun to look back at that wall and see if they've changed any of the writing or added to it here we get another shot of the mob of the dead area of the map and this again just adds up proof to why I think they've expanded the map because firstly you can see a little gobble machine at the bottom left I'll zoom in for that so you can see they're a bit clearer uh, maybe they've expanded the area because we need more space to understand why we got the blood vials from the two prisoners maybe we will see a return of Sal and Finn in this map because we obviously got a lot of mob of the dead space here but still what I'm trying to figure out is where this is because underneath that clock that looks like it could head into the cafeteria which would make sense however on the left that looks like the area where you're running down to the warden's office and if you carried on up that way you'd kind of bump into the showers kind of way and near the cafeteria and then that part where they're standing on right now near the bodies looks like the gondola area where you'd have to jump back up to power the gondola so i don't know if they've changed the map layout expanded it or kind of just taken bits of every bit of the little map and then just crammed it all in together to one area but i'm not sure what they've done because i really really do not recognize this part of the map this is one of my favorite things about revelations because obviously we're playing as the origins crew and the origins crew never got a chance to use the rocket shield or the little arnies or anything we saw in shadows vivo like the path conservant so it's fun to have them use the little arnies and have nikolai say things like oh what happens if i let it out of jar does it go boom but still really excited to see all the little voice lines that we'll get with all the little arnies can't wait to see how you grade those in these maps this is also the other shot of the starting room that I was talking about. As Nikolai's shaking the little, little Arnie, you can see the quick vibe machine just above the top of the jar, and you can also see the RK5 wall by in the background, which means the house is behind us, which it further means we might not actually get to go into the house. There's then this shot of Nikolai using the Banshee, which is confirmed to be in Zombies now, and this could be Mob of the Dead because obviously we have the cell gate to the right of the screen, and we also have the electric trap, which we're using on the doorway here. Wonder what the Banshee will be like upgraded which will be quite fun to figure out now this is the part of the map that i'm really looking forward to going into because Kino to Totem was my original map that I got a high round on and it took me six hours to get to 40 foot, round 44 and that's when I first started playing zombies. So I'm really excited to go back onto the stage and seeing how far it's opened up. Uh, see if we can still train on the train, uh, on the stage, sorry. See how much of the theatre we actually have. I think we actually have this section in front of the theatre, uh, the stage as well because there is a shot after this where you see uh, Nikolai using the Apothecan Servant and he's actually standing by one of the staircases. But still, we can see his Kino to Totem. We have the teleporter, we have the main podium bit. In the background, we have the the premise pictures with the staves which I think will be kind of reason why the, st the staffs will be in this map because they can't just put pictures in there I mean Jason Blundell did say we'd see them again and I said on one of the, someone's video I commented like oh maybe he actually just meant we'll see them in like a picture or something but I think we actually might get them back because there's lots and lots of little hints here towards them also there's a box location at the back of the stage or however far we can go back but I don't know if you can see it I'll zoom in there's a little mannequin head and a candle I believe this is another place where we'll put one of them guffins from Garod Crovey. I think we'll put the candle the other side of that mannequin head or somewhere around here and then that's the plant sorted and the candle sorted and I think we've only got to find a use for the flask after that. So this is a shot that I was talking about just this is actually Nikolai standing with his back towards the leftmost window if you're standing in the teleporter that's the rightmost window. In the background I think we can see that's either the Shiva or the HVK. If it's the Shiva 
I think it could be a Verruckt situation where we all start in different spawn rooms. So we might have someone start in the actual Revelation spawn room, we might have someone start in the Kino section, we might have someone start in the Shangri-La spawn room, in the Mob of the Dead spawn room, and then obviously you turn on power or something and it will give you a way to obviously teleport between the, the few of them. But still, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Kino looks because as you can see it's twisted, it looks nothing like it did in Black Ops 1. We've got trees coming stuff up, we, we don't actually have staircase anymore, we just have these like pile of rubble that have kind of been thrown together to form a staircase and obviously we have the Apothecan Servant come back which means when Jason Blundell said that it wasn't upgradable in Shadows of Evil it means it's upgradable in Revelations which I'm really looking forward to uh, how to do it. So this is going to just be a mind boggling map, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Now this is the creature that that we saw in that split frame uh, in the earlier in the trailer it looks like something else that you have to shoot its mouth and also its arms are glowing so I believe that's another weak spot but it looks grim I don't know whether this is the final boss of the map or whether it's like I'm not sure with this map because later in the trailer we see Margwas we see this thing and we see that big flying worm thing at the end that comes into the um comes into the map so I'm not sure how many bosses we're going to have to fight in this map and I'm not sure how frequently we are because obviously we had George Romero who was constantly following you around until you killed him then you have two rounds and he'd come back we have the Margwas and the flying things which would come every five rounds similar to dogs Margwas could spawn whenever so I don't know how many bosses they're throwing into this map and if we do get maps like Shangri-La and things like that will we get these associated zombies with those and what I mean by that is we had special zombies like napalm zombies and shrieker zombies Will they be in that section of the map? Will they be in the whole map or will they just not include them? Because I think there's a fair few, excuse me, there's a fair few bosses going around in this map that I'm not sure how they're going to kind of sort it out round wise. Like maybe a Margra comes one round, this ink thing comes another round, a Napalm zombie comes another round. And I think that could get a bit annoying if that's what they're choosing to do. There's a quick shot of the keeper here and instead of having the regular circle emblem on his chest, it actually has the Apothecan not the Apothecan, sorry, uh, the Keeper for the word curse and obviously the tagline for zombies when it started up was only the curse survived. So maybe they already told us how this big battle between the Apothecans and the Keepers will go. Maybe the Keepers actually win this fight. This is what I was talking about. We have more Margwas here, except for this time it's not a yellow Margwa and it's not a purple Margwa. It's actually a blue Margwa, which means it could be infused with 115 or something. However, when we kill this, will it drop a blue Margwa heart? And if it does, then surely we have a reason and to be carrying the purple Margwa heart, maybe there's somewhere where we have to collate all of the Margwa hearts we've collected. So the regular Margwa heart that we used to, maybe, oh, maybe that's how you upgrade the Apothecan Servant. You take the purple Margwa heart from Shadows of Evil that you get during the Easter egg step. You get a regular Margwa heart from either Shadows of Evil or a regular um, Margwa if you can change them in this map. You get a blue Margwa heart, and similar to how you upgraded the KT4 on Zetsbone Rishima, you got like the kind of upgraded versions of like the vial of stuff, you got the upgraded version of the plant that you watered. Maybe you just get the three different hearts, put them together and upgrade the Apothecan Servant. I swear to God, if that's how you upgrade it in this map, I am very clever because I called that from the trailer and that's just from my mind. So if, if you upgrade the Apothecan Servant by using three different Margo hearts, I want a freaking medal. Happy to see the rocket shield coming back. I loved the whole steampunk vibe of it and it's actually Dempsey using it here in the Eisen Drag. If you just look in the background there, you can see the MPD. Uh, as I said, really happy to see it come back. I think it was a bit more fun than the Garod Crove one, although the Garod Crove one could get you out of a lot of tight stops, uh, spots. This can actually teleport you like kind of in a straight line, which I'm really happy to see come back. We then get Rick's offering using the Ragnarok DG4s, and I'm going to be really, really disappointed if the Ragnaroks are the only specialist in this map, because every map we've had something different, especially when we played Zetspo and we got a skull for Christ's sake. So this is what's leading me to believe that we have different specialists because we have different maps already in the maps. So maybe there's challenges in those certain maps that get you different specialist weapons. So obviously you go to the Dryzen Drak bit like Richtofen's in now, which by the way, I think this part is actually situated just in front of the, the big spire, the big prestige emblem thing, but still. I think you go to the like the, the, the Eisen Drak bit, get all the parts of the Ragnarok there, build it there. Go to the Zetsbo no Shima bit, do something there, get the skull or something. You can choose which specialist weapon you have. If they do that, that will be actually dope. But if not, I don't hate the Ragnaroks. I think they're really fun. But it will just be a little underwhelming if they put so much effort into making this epic map and all they've done is just given us an old specialist weapon. This is an amazing shot. I really like the way this shot looks. So we have the red lightning coming off the big spire. And part of me is thinking maybe you could actually use the spire as a trap kind of. So like 
I don't know, maybe you pay points or maybe you activate it in a certain way so it zaps zombies. However, the other thing I'm thinking is with the Groth modules on Grod Krovi, it gave this effect when it when you were killing zombies around it, but it was blue lightning. So maybe you have to kill zombies and the souls will be zapped into the big orb, like the lightning's going into it. Also, something else to point out is on the right of the screen, you can actually see a floating rock with a huge uh, blue light coming from it. Obviously, every zombie fan knows that's a bo box location. So that rock there, you can actually get onto and use the box. Here's another blink and you'll miss it thing. Quickly before this worm comes in, you can actually see a shot of Alcatraz just in the background there floating. So obviously, that's somewhere else we can go because we're going to be going to Mob of the Dead. Then here's the picture that we got leaked before we actually got the map released. Uh, we can see the pack punch here. We can see the Shiva war by a gobble gun machine and uh, I think this church might be something from origins we also in the top left have a map on a rock which I don't know how we're going to get through and I can't quite pinpoint what map it is but still and as you can see there the spire is blue confirming my fit theory that you can change its color but still other than that I don't know what else to say there's not much more left in this trailer there actually isn't anything more interesting after this point so that's been my hyper analysis detail breakdown thing of this trailer. I'm really hoping you can upgrade the Apothecary Servant the way I thought it was because that would be pretty cool. But still, Pack a Punch seems a bit high for the player to use. Maybe you have to destroy that truck or make it lower down or something. Or maybe it's just put there as a prop and that's not the real Pack a Punch. But still. So yeah, guys, if you are still with me at the end, thank you very much for watching all the way through. Please share it because I really want my Margo theory to go out there. That would be quite funny. Um... It's a bit of a long one, so again, if you have stuck with it all the way through, and if you do agree with some of the things I've see, said, or if you've spotted things that I haven't mentioned, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I always talk back to you. Uh, please consider liking the video. It took a while to get all these clips and all the recording down. Uh, other than that, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I've been General Gerbil. Peace out.